In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take the first of two looks at the text blur effect. Some months ago, we released a tutorial on several text masking effects. A subscriber pointed out to me that it wasn't the best effort we've done, and I went and looked at it and wholeheartedly agreed. Uh, it was complicated, it didn't give me some clear examples, and it uh, covered too many effects in one tutorial. So we're going to narrow the focus down and begin to show you some practical ways you can use the text blur effect. I have this 23 second clip of some cyclists and I'd like to put some text on the screen, but I'm not going to use a title in this case. I'm going to use this effect. So to get to it, I go to the effects room. I can click on the FX in the left upper left corner or press the F4 key. Now I could automatically slide down and move to the text blur effect. They're alphabetical. A shorter way is to click the down arrow and then in my slider in my top menu, go to text masking. And then I can choose this, which is one of five options, text blur. I'm going to take it and drag it down to the effects track. Now with most effects, there are th three places that you can put them. You can put them in a track of their own. You can drop an effect right on an object, whether it's a clip or whether it is a uh, still image, or you can drop them on a title track. Now what I'd like to recommend is this one seems to work really well when you put it in a track of its own. And I'll tell you why. Because you can, can control the length of the effect, which is important. And you'll see so in a minute. The other option is you can also take this, and if it's in a track of its own, you can impact more than one item on tracks that are higher at the same time. Uh, when you drop it inside an object, it's embedded in that object and somewhat controlled by the object, but it can't influence anything outside of it. What we're going to do now is look at some of the features of the text blur effect as we introduce it to you. I'll double click on it and that allows me to get into my modify. I also could click on the button up here. We need a bit more real estate here in order to show you all it can do. So I'm going to drag over here just a little bit, grab a little more uh, room. There are several features of this. You notice when we have the track here, it put the word on the screen and the default word is cyberlink. And then it does uh, tend to blur the area around the letters. And that's what the degree slider is all about. It goes from one to 40. I, if I move it all the way to 40, the blurring effect is at its maximum level down to one. It's uh, not visible at all. So that's what that slider is all about. The slider above it is called contrast. This is the intensity of the effect. Now, if I move to the right, the area around the letters seems to darken or intensify. If I move to the left, it tends to lighten almost to the point where it looks like frosted glass. So those are your two options. Now, if you're playing with the sliders or actually playing with the title and change any of these things, I'll change this to uh, look here. That will be my text. If I go ahead and click down here again, I've got the look here text. Um, if I click the reset button, it will change not only my sliders, but my text. It goes back to the default of Cyberlink. It also changes the font. We have several uh, options in terms of motion of the text across the screen. So if I click the down arrow under motion, I have really three options duplicated in two directions. So left one is the same as right one except for direction. So the default is scroll left one. So I go ahead and play the clip and the word cyberlink scrolls uh, to the left. If I do the uh, right one and click play here, it scrolls in the opposite direction. There are two other options in each direction. The second is scroll left two and when we click on the play button there, I have the moving of in the same location to the left. And then I have a fragment of the top and bottom moving to the right. The third option is the same thing scrolling to the left. 
and then some smaller text at angles moving up and down across the lettering. I don't know when I'd use that particular one. So let's go back to the default scroll left and click right here. Let's see. One of the things that you cannot control, at least currently in the application with this effect, is you cannot control the position of the letters vertically. They will scroll across roughly the center of your screen. And there's nothing you can do to change that. You can't move them up or move them down. You can change the font. If you click on the T, the font selector over here, you can control the kind of font that's on the screen. Uh, let's pick another one here um, that hopefully won't look too bad on the screen. Let's do this Oranda. And you can also control the size. Now notice the default is a big 162. And when you take the slider and drag it down, the maximum is 72. But don't forget you have the option of moving into this box and manually changing the number to anything you want. I'll change it to 120. And uh, we'll click on OK. And now I have a slightly smaller font uh, as it plays. But again, I could not impact the location. Now there are two factors that control the speed of the text across the screen. One factor is the number of characters. Again, the default is Cyberlink. I've been able to type in over 250 characters in this title area, so you can go a long ways. But if I go, uh, this is a man on a bike on a road, and then I go ahead and click anywhere off that. We'll start at the beginning again. And now it looks like the text is moving a lot faster, and indeed it is. But this, this is one of the two things that control the pace of the text across the screen. How many letters it has to squeeze into the length of the effect. Now if I want it to slow it down so it's as slow as it was when I had the word cyberlink, all I need to do is take my effect, make it a lot longer, and this is why it's nice to have this effect on a track of its own. And then I move across here and uh, now it's moving much slower, or it seems to be, because I have more characters, now I have more time. So it mathematically divides the character count into the length of the effect and that controls the apparent speed. So these are some things you need to know as you begin to use this effect. Next time we're going to look a little bit at how to do some cool keyframing with this effect and how to use it when you want to put it inside an object.